Hello everyone and welcome to today's discussion over chemical buffer systems. Today we will be going over the different chemical buffers and how they act against changes in hydrogen concentration. We will begin by having a brief overview regarding what chemical buffer systems are. We will then move on to a detailed discussion regarding numerous types of chemical buffer systems that help maintain homeostasis in our bodies. Finally, we will take a look at a case study of chemical buffer systems and what would happen if they were not in place. Now, if you're ready, let's begin. Now, let's first take a look about what chemical buffer systems are. A chemical buffer system is a mixture in a solution of two chemical compounds that minimize pH changes when either an acid or a base is added to or removed from the solution. A buffer system works by either binding to or generating a hydrogen ion depending on the addition to removal of an acid or base. Buffer systems are the first line of defense against changes in the concentration of hydrogen in the, the body's fluid and move into action immediately. These systems consist of a pair of substance, substances that can undergo a reversible reaction. What this means is that when the reaction moves in one direction, one substance can yield a hydrogen ion and in the other direction, another substance can bind to any free-floating hydrogen ions. We can see this by looking at an important buffer reaction known as the carbonic acid biocarbonate pair. This is the buffer system that consists of weak acid and its conjugate base. To further explain this, the carbonic acid biocarbonate buffer system consists of carbonic acid, the weak acid, and the uh, biocarbonate ion. Its conjugate base and its conjugate base. When hydrogen ions in the body become too low, carbonic acid undergoes a chemical reaction in which it loses, loses or donates one of its hydrogens. It then transforms into biocarbonate. When the hydrogen concentration becomes too high, biocarbonate is able to bind to the extra hydrogen ions, forming carbonic acid. There are four buffer systems that we will discuss a little more in depth. These include carbonic acid biocarbonate buffer system, which we have mentioned, the protein buffer system, the hemoglobin buffer system, and the phosphate buffer system. Now, let's take a closer look at the carbonic acid biocarbonate buffer system. Carbonic acid biocarbonate buffer system. The carbonic acid biocarbonate buffer system is the most important buffer system for non-carbonic acids in the extracellular fluid. The system is readily available for maintaining normal pH values in the body due to an abundance of carbonic acid and biocarbonate. This system is also effective because it is highly regulated by the kidneys and the respiratory system. As we can see from the equation, looking at it from left to right, carbonic or carbon dioxide provided by the respiratory system combined with water to form carbonic acid, which is broken down to form biocarbonate and hydrogen. The reaction occurs in this direction when the plasma hydrogen concentration falls below normal levels. This leads to an increase in hydrogen and pH is restored. Looking at this equation in reverse order from right to left, biocarbonate from the kidneys binds with extra hydrogen ions in the plasma, which yields carbonic acid. This can be further broken down to create carbon dioxide and water. This can be, or excuse me, this chain of events occurs when the concentration of hydrogen in the plasma is too high and levels need to be lowered to restore a normal pH balance. There's an important equation to be used in order to express the relationship of this buffering system and the concentration of hydrogen. It is known as the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. This equation is used in order to determine the pH level of the plasma. Now that we have gone over the carbonic acid biocarbonate buffer system, let's now move on to protein buffers. The most plentiful buffers of the body fluids are the protein including the intracellular proteins and the plasma proteins. Proteins consist of amino acids held together by peptide bonds. The amino acids possess an amino group and a carbolic acid group. At physiological pH, the carbolic acid exists as the carbo carbolate ion with a negative charge and the amino group exists as 
in NH3 plus ions. Proteins are excellent buffers because they contain both acidic and basic groups that can be given up or take up one H1. When the pH becomes acidic, the carbolic group takes up excessive hydrogen ions to return back to the carbolic acid form. If the blood pH becomes alkaline, there is a release of proton from the NH3 plus ion, which takes the NH2 form. Quantitatively, the protein system is most important in buffering changes in H1 in the ICF because of the sheer abundance of intracellular proteins. The more limited number of plasma proteins reinforces the carbonic acid biocarbonate buffer system in, extra, in extracellular buffering. Now that we have gone over protein buffers, let's now move on to the hemoglobin buffer system. Hemoglobin also has buffering actions within tissues. It has an ability to bind with either protons or oxygen at a given point of time. Binding of one releases the other. In hemoglobin, the binding of protons occurs in the globin portion, whereas oxygen binding occurs at the ion of the heme portion. At the time of exercise, protons are generated in excess. Hemoglobin helps in the buffering action by binding these protons and simultaneously releasing molecular oxygen. During the conversion of carbon dioxide into biocarbonate, hydrogen ions liberated in the reaction are buffered by hemoglobin, which is re uh, reduced by the dissociation of oxygen. This buffering helps maintain normal pH. The process is reversed in the pulmonary capillaries to reform carbon dioxide which then can diffuse into the air sacs to be ex exhaled into the atmosphere. The last chemical buffer system that we will be going over is the phosphate buffer system. The phosphate buffer system acts in a manner similar to the biocarbonate buffer, but has much stronger action. The internal environment of all cells contains this buffer comprising hydrogen phosphate ions and dihydrogen phosphate ions. Under conditions when excess hydrogen enters the cells, it reacts with the hydrogen phosphate ions, which accepts them. Under alkaline conditions, the dihydrogen phosphate ions accept the excess hydro or hydroxide ions that enter the cell. Phosphates are found in the blood in two forms, sodium dihydrogen phosphate, which is a weak acid, and a sodium monohydrogen phosphate, which is a weak base. When mono, monohydrogen phosphate comes to contact with a strong acid such as, such as HCI, the base picks up a second hydrogen ion to form the weak acid uh, dihydrogen phosphate and sodium chloride. NAC1, when monohydrogen hydrogen phosphate comes into contact with a strong base such as a sodium hydroxide, the weak acid reverts back to the weak base and produces water. Acids and bases are still present, but they hold onto the ions. Now you may be thinking, why do chemical buffers matter? Chemical buffers are important because cells function in a narrow range of pH. So do the many enzymes that help you digest food, make energy, and relay signals between nerve cells. As such, it is vital that the pH in the body and in the cells does not vary drastically, otherwise they'll stop doing the work you need them to do. To make sure that this does not happen, buffers are found in all biologically relevant solutions. Biological buffers can also be buffer systems that help maintain a steady pH around the physiological pH. When conducting experiments with individual components of cells or individual proteins, scientists must take into account the buffer they use. Without a good buffer, the activity of the component they want to study may decrease. Now before we conclude today's discussion over chemical buffers, let's take a look at a case study. The purpose of this case study was to determine the buffer capacity of unstimulated whole saliva, aka UWS, and stimulated whole saliva, aka SWS, at a specific pH in the interval from pH 7.5 down to pH 3.0. The contribution, the contribution of the buffer systems was 
also determined under conditions resembling those in the mouth. UWS and SWS were collected from 20 healthy volunteers. The, the saliva was collected under paraffin oil in order to avoid loss of carbon dioxide. The buffer capacity of UWS and SWS in samples with and without biocarbonate and carbon dioxide were measured at various pH by acid titration in a closed system at 36 degrees Celsius. The materials and methods that were used. Saliva was collected from 20 volunteers, 9 males and 11 females aged 27 and 25 years of age. They were recruited from students and staff at the School of Dentistry in Copenhagen. Each individual underwent a standard interview including questions on their medical history and medication. Two males suffered from allergy and two females from asthma. None of the volunteers were on medication and none were medicated on the day of the experiment. Four females took oral contraceptives. The experiment was approved by the local ethical committee. The study found that saliva pH became significantly more alkaline with increasing flow rates. A high pH can be ascribed either to a high biocarbonate concentration or to carbon dioxide loss from the sam sample during collection, resulting in a shift in equilibrium, equilibrium to the left and thus a low biocarbonate concentration. Here, a high pH is indicative of the first possibility because the saliva was collected under paraffin oil, avoiding carbon dioxide loss. However, when saliva samples were exposed to the atmosphere, the pH changed in the alkaline direction due to loss of carbon dioxide. The study has shown that a high salivation rate for unstimulated and stimulated whole saliva implies the presence of a high biocarbonate concentration, a more alkaline pH, and a high buffer capacity. In contrast, low rates of secretion imply a lower bicarbonate concentration, a more acidic pH, and a lesser buffer capacity. The saliva buffer capacity has been correlated with a high incidence of dental, uh, dental caries. Thus, a variety of methods to evaluate the buffer capacity of whole saliva has been applied during the century. In contrast to previous studies, the present study determines the buffer capacity at specific uh, saliva pH under conditions resembling those in the mouth. Such measurements also allow for or calculation of the actual biocarbonate as well as uh, carbon dioxide loss and thus for determining the contribution to the buffer capacity of this buffer system. Accordingly, we have shown that the biocarbonate system clearly is the dominant system in the range between pH 7 and pH 5 and in particular in stimulated whole saliva. The contribution made by the protein buffer system was limited, limited due to acidic pH, where it is predominantly governed the buffer capacity. And that concludes the, today's discussion regarding chemical buffer systems. I thank you all for joining, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.